Hello, my name is Alias Litrov and my name is Peter Zobec and we are coming from Faculty of Mechanical Engineering from University of Ljubljana. On this international conference on crack pads, we would like to introduce you our experimental crack pad analysis of aluminum alloy specimen under dynamic shear loading using digital image correlation methods. For industrial applications, the material should be thoroughly tested following validated standards. From static tensile tests, we collect basic mechanical properties of some material. For more special applications, we need more specific data as forming limit curve and for fatigue, low and high cycle fatigue tests. Despite all mentioned tests, there is still not enough data for shear properties, especially dynamic shear properties, which guided us in development of own fixture system and specimen geometry. Because measuring of shear strain is non-trivial problem, we had decided to DIC method. At the end, we set the main objective, using the digital image correlation DIC method for observing shear fatigue crack initialization and growth of aluminum 6061 sheet specimen. The background of our fixture system is ASTM D7078 standard, which describes static shear loading tests of composite materials. We optimize the standard fixtures for alternating and pulsating loads with the possibility of testing at elevated temperatures. Shear strain can be measured by extensometer, video extensometer and DIC. During the optimization of fixture system, we were also optimizing the specimen geometry. Initial geometry was based on before mentioned standard in shape of V-notch specimen, which in our case was not suitable because of high stress concentration in the root of the notch. The finite element optimization method was used to derive the final geometry, which has variable radius and predictable crack initialization. Our DIC setup for fatigue crack observation consisted out of 0.5 megapixel CMOS monochromatic camera equipped with 50 times magnifying lens, which can be seen here on the picture. The surface specimen was lit by white colored light source, which was guided by an optical fiber cable. So this setup ensured us a clear and sharp view on the random speckle pattern on the surface of the specimen, which is inside of the our fixture system. DIC is a non-destructive surface strain measurement method. Our DIC setup was capturing images at peak loads of every cycle. DIC algorithm starts by first dividing the initial image into subsets, which are then tracked throughout all images. An example for one subset is seen here. Final result consists of relative subset displacement from its original position with a natural consequence of strain derivation. It appears as if the entire surface was covered with virtual strain gauges. Encore was used as a DSC analysis software. It is an open source software that is well accepted in the research community. It tracks subset by means of translation, rotation, and deformation, also allowing for subset cutoff if the correlation criteria is not met. It uses two correlation optimization methods, the general, general normalized grayscale cross-correlation and nonlinear optimization for sub-pixel correlation. As the crack progresses, DSC shows this crack as a means of high strain gradient. As we see on this first example, subsets above the crack move in that direction and subset below the crack move in this direction. Of course, this is our shear direction. This is seen as a great gradient across this normally uniform field. Another way to view our, our crack is to look at this example where a crack grows through a subset. As the crack grows through a subset, it of course separates this subset and the anchor algorithm fails to correlate its position because it is being torn apart. This is seen as subset cutoff, and it's seen on this real picture as this gray area with no real data. These two methods 
are used to clearly display a crack on the surface of the specimen. This slide displays a series of images calculated by DIC. Here versus number of cycles display the crack propagation at 0.3 mm ultra-ranging displacement load at 0.2 Hz frequency. The first image is a reference image which displays noise in the measurement system. As we see, the left crack appears first, followed by the one on the right. On the left image, we can clearly observe the complete rupture. The focus of our study was to inspect the shear strain plots. The anchor software was used to extract also the other in-plane strain, namely in the X and Y direction. As we can observe, the crack is most noticeable in the shear XY direction, but can also be extracted from other components, as all directions of strain field clearly show the complete rupture of specimen. Here we compare the synchronized output plots throughout the specimen lifespan. Track length measurement was done using an image processing software called GIMP, which allows us to measure crack in pixels. Length in pixels was converted to length in millimeters on the basis of known image scale. As we observed on the previous slide, the left crack nucleates first at cycle number 22. It appears that the crack growth rate is constant. Just below the cycle number 30, the right crack appears and grows at higher constant rate as compared to the left crack. The complete rupture was reached at cycle number 38. The final length of both cracks was similar, but with different growth rates. An additional verification of the crack initialization location had been done by a simple finite element analysis. The right image displays the principal stress vectors. We can observe a region of highly concentrated tensile stress, thin red colored arrows, at variable radius of the notch, which corresponds with the actual crack nucleation site. Across the symmetry of the specimen, Purple arrows show regions of compressive stress, an unlikely site of crack to appear. As crack progresses further in depth of the specimen, the implant principal stress became similar in magnitude, corresponding to homogeneous field of shear stress. We concluded that the crack nucleates at the surface where the knot geometry creates areas of high tensile stress as we predicted during notch analysis. Further growth is governed by homogeneous shear stresses near the symmetry line of the specimen. And the main conclusion is that proposed method with a special designed fixture and special designed specimen shape and DIC accompanied crack measurement can be used for experiments on the growth of shear loaded fatigue cracks. Thank you very much for your attention. We hope to see you soon. Goodbye.